Our webinar today is focused on the benefits of membership of AG in AGLCA, as well as all of the different resources that you can find on our website. Um, we find that a lot of members, particularly newer members, never really are able to come across everything there is to offer on the website because there is so much detail there. So we like to do these webinars occasionally and kind of give you a walkthrough. So on the call today are a mix of current members who are probably seeking some more information on what's available to them, as well as non-members who are curious about membership. And we're going to go through all of the features and benefits of the website, which is where the majority of the benefits come from. So I am going to go ahead and share my screen. You should now be able to see what I'm seeing on my screen. So if for any reason you don't, again, just uh, type something in the little chat there and um, we'll see if we can get you some help. There is also um, online help through the GoToTraining website. Uh, since it's just me on here, sometimes it's a little bit challenging for me to do any uh, troubleshooting or tech support while I'm presenting the webinar. So the first place I wanna point out to you, uh, this is of course our website, greatloop.org. If you are a member, um, before you log in, there's a login button over here on the uh, right-hand side. I have already logged in, so my name is there. Um, and I'm going to show you all the things that can be found under your profile here, a little bit more towards the end, most likely, um, because if we do have any current, or, or I'm sorry, non-members that aren't worried about that at this point, they may not be interested in that profile point, and they can certainly drop off. But I will start by showing you, um, as I said, this is the homepage. Many of the items down here are also, um, you can also get to them through the menus up above. So I'm going to focus primarily on everything that's in those menus today. Um, but there's a short intro video that tells you a little bit about the Great Loop. Um, the About the Route section is chock full of information, and I'm going to actually start there in just a moment. This is a new area where um, under loop completions, we discovered in 2019 that um, we had not picked up all of the loop completion announcements. Um, some people changed them in the database themselves, which is fine, um, but we found we missed a few. So we've got a form that we like you to officially um, notify us when you have finished the Great Loop. Um, this is all uh, information about the route, this learn more here. So that's got details. And again, they're accessed through, through the menus as well, but these are just kind of shortcuts. The Great Loop Necessities takes you to the products and that are offered through the website and through some other websites. And then this is just a, a direct link to that member profile I mentioned. The biggest place I want to draw your attention on this homepage is the latest news on that upper right area. This is where we put important notices. Um, it's also where we put things that are kind of more or less announcements. So a lot of times people will announce something in the forum and on social media, and then someone is looking for it later and has trouble finding it. Usually those kind of temporary happenings are listed over here in latest news, and we've got them under a few different categories. But if you're looking something that was for something that was recently announced and can't find a link, um, you know, for example, to uh, sign up for Houston or to um, nominate someone for Harbor Host of the Year, for example, a lot of those temporary things with deadlines are listed here in the latest news. So be sure to check that out occasionally and, and particularly if there's something you're looking for that's going on right now. All right, so like I said, I'm gonna focus on the menus here today. And I see we, we have had a few more join us. So just as a quick introduction, this is Kim Russo. I'm the director of AGLCA. And I'm gonna go ahead and, and start to show you some of the benefits on the website. I wanna start with the route menu and show you our Great Loop map, because this is really where a lot of the benefits and things that you can find at other places on the site come together. And this was released within the past year. We're still adding to it. Um, obviously, when you're on the home screen here, it's pretty cluttered. We've got a lot of markers on this map, but you can see the outline of the route there. Um, there are many categories, and as I scroll down here, you can see them, but harbor hosts are the ring buoys. Uh, those are the markers. We've got harbor guides, which are being submitted by harbor hosts, which are kind of introductions to their specific areas. Um, the Great Loop segments give you information about the route itself. And then we've got a series of the plain colored markers are for all of our different categories of sponsors. 
The most recent addition is adding some of the best of, of the Great Loop, and these are being submitted by members uh, because we always see people posting in the forum about something they particularly liked or enjoyed about a specific place or a specific event. So we are adding those as they are received. The process for adding those is very simply, if you are a member, you submit the form found here. Um, you click on that, submit the point of interest, you'll just tell us what category and tell us what that point of interest is about. Um, so that's essentially the different categories. Uh, to kind of reduce some of the clutter on the map, you can select the category you're looking for, um, and you can select multiple categories if you want at the same time. But for now, I'm gonna choose Harbor Hosts. And you'll notice it's zoomed way out. That's because it's showing us all of the Harbor Hosts everywhere. And we actually have a few in Australia, a few on the West Coast. Uh, that is because we have lots of members coming from Australia and the West Coast at this point. And the local Harbor Hosts there while not providing information on the route itself from a local standpoint, many of them have met with other members uh, in their area to kind of offer some advice and encouragement. So that's why it zooms out. This button here, regardless of how far zoomed out you are, if you hit find my location, and you may have to tell your device to allow that, but it'll zoom into where you are. Um, I am outside of Charleston, South Carolina today, and it's zooming in quite tightly. Um, you've got also, the buttons here to zoom in and out manually. So I am gonna zoom out a little bit and I'm gonna assume perhaps I'm looking for a Harbor Host in the Charleston area. So if you zoom out enough, you can see we've got a couple of Harbor Hosts in Charleston. Um, I am actually gonna specifically click on this one outside of Charleston. Uh, we try to be very uh, protective of our member data and our Harbor Host information. So knowing that we opened this webinar up to non-members. I don't want to click on a point that is um, a harbor host who perhaps doesn't want to be known to non-members. So this is actually someone at our office in Somerville. So when you click on a harbor host uh, marker, you get the town name. And this map is open to the public. As soon as you get to one of these type buttons that say click for harbor host details or click for sponsor details is when you're moving behind our member firewall and you have to be logged in. But once you click for the harbor host details, you will get that person's information screen. So you get all of their contact information and any, any other personal information that they have chosen to share. This is all coming from the person's profile. And as I said, I'll show you where that profile is and how you can maintain that as we go through this webinar. Um, but that's at that point, you can reach out to that harbor host for information. Um, let's say, for example, if I go back here, um, let's say I wanted to find all of the different markers around Charleston. I can type, oh, have to go back one more level, sorry about that. Um, this is based on city name, so now I will not find the one in Somerville, but if I type Charleston, I can see all of the harbor hosts with, in the city of Charleston. Um, I can also see any sponsors that are here in Charleston. And I can see that Charleston was selected for one of the best of because it's got the star there. So if I tap that one, uh, it'll zoom into it and I can check here to see what the, the best of category is. This was named one of the best of the big cities. Um, here in Charleston, we might not agree that it's a best, it's a big city. <laughs> we would probably say it's a best of the small cities. Um, but as I said, members are submitting this and we are putting them in the categories they're choosing unless it's something that's, you know, kind of way off. Um, but also on the best of, you can click to learn more and it'll bring you to a page specific to the best of the big cities. And you can see who submitted this as Charleston as the best big city. And we asked them to explain to us why as well. Um, so you can see a lot of people have mentioned Chicago as the best big city, but that's available to members as well. Um, once you get beyond the map, you can see the reasons people selected that as the best city. I can also see on this view that we've got a sponsor here. This one happens to be St. John's Yacht Harbor. So once you've kind of focused in on the area you are in, and again, there's a location that will zoom you into your current uh, location, you can see a lot more detail about that city. Um, just to briefly kind of show you as I back up a little bit, um, if we pick a sponsor category, like let's say we pick technology and go to the bottom and hit the arrow that takes us, whoop, sorry about that hit the arrow that takes us to focus just on those technology, you'll notice that everything else has been removed. Um, we do have a technology sponsor in Europe. So again, the zoom out is, is because of that. But you see their markers and you also see their listings here. And if you pick a particular sponsor, 
you will get information um, that you can visit their website. You can also click for sponsor details, and this is where you will find any discounts, any special offers that sponsors are making to members. So it's kind of a geographic search for those special offers. In addition, uh, let me go back a little bit to a different category. Um, if we pick marinas, which we do have a lot of marina sponsors. Um, but if we go visit our marina sponsors here, I just, um, and I actually still have the technology on, so that's the light green and the sponsors of the dark, uh, the marinas of the dark green. So you're actually seeing both categories now and it's zoomed out again uh, because of that sponsor in Europe. Um, but if I pick a marina sponsor, we also have a link for you directly to their waterway guide listing, which provides a lot of detail on the services available at that marina, um, the number of slips, uh, whether they take transients, et cetera. So once you land on that waterway guide, um, you can check out more information from them about the facility. So it's kind of a one-stop shop for all the details on some of the mar marinas you may wish to stop at along the loop. Uh, and the other thing I'll just note about the map at the different levels of zoom, the red line is of course the route itself. Um, this this should go out go without saying, but I'm gonna put out there, uh, this is not for navigation. Um, we have had people point out a couple of um, oddities, so to speak, in the route, and when time permits, we will fix them. Um, but this is primarily to give you a general idea of the waterways that you are traversing and the different route choices. Uh, so that, that's what the red line is for, and you can use that to kind of, if you're you know, in the planning stages, to kind of check out the route and what cities it actually does go through. So that's kind of an abbreviated look at the Great Loop map and the different resources and details available to you. The one category I, I should have clicked on and neglected to, so let me go back there quickly, is the Great Loop segments. So let me turn off some of these other categories and just do the Great Loop segments. And those are marked with the AGLCA logo. Each one has a lot of detail for our planners and our current loopers about the segment that they're representing. So this one, if I pick this, is the Jacksonville to Norfolk segment. And if I pick that, and again, clicking this button takes me into the member area. I get a lot of detail about the Jacksonville to Norfolk segment. Um, first, the map zooms into that segment, so you can see all of the different markers specific to that segment. So for example, if you're planning that part of the route from Jacksonville to Norfolk, you can take a look at some of the best ofs um, and some of the harbor hosts and things like that along the way. The other thing though is there's tons of information here and I think it's one of the best kept secrets on the website. Um, we have some members only content about this segment. So first of all, forum posts. And we, when we see new forum posts about that particular segment, we build a link to them here. So of course it's very extensive. The newer ones are at the top. Um, but so as you're planning that segment, you can review forum posts specific to this segment. The next one down is captain's notes. Um, that is a place for people to leave messages for others about their experiences on that segment. We put links to the Great Loop link articles that we have written about that particular segment. And we give you a sample itinerary. Um, the sample itineraries, uh, they're just one example of the different stops you could plan. Um, there are probably an infinite number of different itineraries you could choose. But there seems to be an average distance of about 50 miles per day that most loopers cover on average. So we based the itinerary on that and got some feedback from some of our gold loopers. So here's a rough itinerary with you know, some of the places that you're really gonna want to stop, um, which accounts for some of the days that are shorter than 50. Occasionally you'll have a longer than 50 mile day, um, but essentially this itinerary that's built here as an example uh, has 16 legs. So essentially 16 cruising days for that segment. And you can spend of course as many days in each location as you choose. Each leg is of course clickable. And if you click that, you get general cruising information for that leg, you get some of the things to see and do, and you get some websites that are helpful in planning your trip to that particular portion of the loop. And then of course, the next button will take you to the next leg, et cetera. Um, AGLCA sponsors in the area will be listed. 
So lots of resources here for planning and doing the Great Loop, and that can all be accessed through the map. Um, if you'll remember, we got to the map from this the route session. The segments slash itinerary is really just a shortcut to this, the area I just showed you. So if you click from the route menu on segments and itineraries, it'll take you directly to this area where you can pick the segment you want to look at. We were just on the Jacksonville to Norfolk segment, but you can pick any segment you choose and examine that in detail. Again, there's, there'll be that same members only content and additional useful information I didn't quite uh, touch on while we were looking at the Jacksonville to Norfolk. Um, we have our podcast and here we put specific podcasts that were recorded that covered something in that particular area. We have links to articles not written by us, articles outside our site and some other useful sites about that particular area. So really a treasure trove of information here. And as I said, I think this is the one of the best kept secrets on the site because we get a lot of questions from new members looking for things like this that kind of indicates to us that they haven't stumbled across this yet. So that's where you'll find all that in the route. We also have a special button here for the Illinois Waterway 2020 closure. Um, you can also see that we get, we're getting lots and lots of questions about that. So there's a button linking to that right from this header graphic because it's such a big deal for many of our members. So if you're planning to loop in 2020 and you have questions about the waterway closures, just click right here on this big old button on the home page, and it'll take you to the page specific to the Illinois waterway. So that's the route menu. Um, from there, I'm going to jump over and work left to right from here. The information menu is set up to be everything that provides information about the Great Loop. Seems pretty self-explanatory, but things like um, newsletter articles, podcasts, webinars, anything that really kind of constitutes us disseminating information to our members. The connect menu, on the other hand, is all different ways for you to connect with other members. So while information is us spewing forth stuff for all of you, typically, um, the connect menu is more for peer-to-peer -peer information between members for them to share that. So we're gonna go through both of those. Um, the frequently asked questions is, is just that. We do encourage you to check that out. That answers, particularly for non-members, it answers the, the biggest questions about the Great Loop. And there's categories, questions about the loop and, and boat, the boats for the loop, um, what to bring, et cetera. And within each category, there are different questions and the answers. So certainly check that out if you've got some, some basic questions about the Great Loop. Um, beyond there, I did mention our podcasts. We try to do those weekly. We are not always successful with that. Um, we just opened up an email address. It's uh, podcast at greatloop.org. If you have suggestions for podcast topics or if you have questions um, for some of the speakers we've had or just general questions about the loop that maybe don't warrant a full podcast episode, we plan to do a Q&A episode when we, we've had enough of those uh, submitted to us. So that's podcast at greatloop.org. But the last um, seven or so podcasts reported are always shown here on this page. So that's aut automatically updated. And this is actually um, the Miami Boat Show Innovation Award winners uh, just be went live today. Um, so that's the easiest way to get to it from the website. You can also find our podcast on most of the podcast apps out there if you search for AGLCA. So if you're a podcast listener, um, take a look at these two places. You can also uh, go back about 140 episodes in our documents area. And I'll show you that in a minute. I know documents and podcasts don't quite flow together. Um, webinars. We hope to do more webinars in the future. Of course, you're on a webinar today, so that's listed as upcoming. Um, and we do record these. So right now we have a few out there that have been recorded. Uh, again, Illinois Waterway lock maintenance information is here. Um, and we have one on crossing borders for Canadians that starts to become popular in the summer for our Canadians friends on the loop. Um, and I'll be updating that one in the next few months because there is some changed information. So we, as I said, we do hope to continue to add webinars. Um, always looking for topics and speakers. And you know, a big issue there is we have to make sure that the speaker's information is not copyrighted elsewhere. So we're trying to get clarification on using screenshots from, from navigation software and things like that. But we do hope to add some more webinars as time goes by. Um, about AGLCA gives you a little bit of the history of the organization. I'll just tell you in a nutshell, we have been around for 20 years. We were founded in 1999 by Ron and Eva Staub. And we have grown uh, substantially over the last few years. We've got about 
4,000 active member ships right now. Um, those are often shared by a couple, so it's about 6,000 members currently. So it's a big group of us. Um, last year, we had about 170 boats complete the Great Loop. Okay, publications and files. The main thing here is the current issue of our Great Loop Link newsletter. This is a digital magazine. Um, you can read it here online and flip through. It is designed to be read on a tablet. And um, you can go to full screen mode, you can download a PDF. We are in the next couple of days, the March issue will come out and we have changed it um, so that the background is all white. It's a little cleaned up of a format, looks a little bit more modern. So look for that coming out in the next few days. Um, you can get several past issues here in the online magazine format, like what you see above. But beyond that, our file library includes all of the past issues um, for the 20 years. There is both a printer-friendly version that basically we take out all of the, the pretty color and graphics and just plain text in case you want to print this. Um, and then there's a PDF version too in case you want to save that to a device or a computer. I do encourage you when time permits, um, another place that has a lot of information that I think is, is um, not known by many members is the complete file library here. So I'm gonna click that and take you to the file library. Um, this is kind of the storage area for everything we put on the, the website. So for example, AGLCA events, you can see upcoming events right now. Um, the Spring Rendezvous does not have any information out here yet, but you can see information for the um, Houston Looper lifestyle coming up. So that's a little bit of a small category right now. I mentioned that our Harbor hosts, we had, we're working on guides, some of them. This is where those are stored. So um, you can click on the, on the map, actually. That was one of the categories we saw on the map. So if you select that category and go on the map, you'll see geographically where we have Harbor Host Guides submitted. But you can also find them here in the Documents area under Harbor Host Guide. And we've also split those up by the different route segments so you can see what's be, been submitted. Um, and then there are a few kind of um, different categories. The things were producing for the Illinois waterway closure. This is just more information we put out there for members who either plan to wait in Chicago or store the boat for winter or go through the Illinois early or after the closing. Um, so lots of things to really explore here. One that I wanna point out particularly, um, the Great Loop podcast, as I mentioned, there's I believe about 140 of them here that you can download or listen on your device. Um, and the other thing to check out is the checklists and procedures. This is actually, there's a link directly to this folder um, on the page we were on previously. So I'll just show that to you. If you haven't visited the complete file library and you just wanna go straight to checklists and procedures, you can click there. You wind up in the same place, but that checklist folder is opened for you. I wanna bring attention to these because these are documents that were prepared by one of our gold loopers for his own boat. And they give details, as you can see from the titles on how to handle all different types of situations, often emergency situations, but some of them are just, um, you know, what you do on a specific, as you're leaving the dock for the day. These are provided in a Word document format. Most of what we put out here is in, out here in the documents area in general is a PDF format since it's more universal for all, all devices. These specifically have been put out here in a Word format because they are designed for you to edit them to be specific to your own boat. So again, these were written by a member. They are specific to his procedures on his boat, but they will give you the step-by-step. -step. And, you know, for example, he says things like grab the red binder on, you know, the port side, very specific, but the steps for you will be the same. So you can change that description. And that's important because on some of these emergency situations, um, the adrenaline is pumping and you don't always remember the obvious. So having the very specific detailed written down step by step, you can print these and leave them at the helm station. And as I said, many of them are emergency situations, but things like getting underway are just a checklist for the mechanical things, um, you know, making sure everything's secured before you get underway. Leaving the boat is if they intend to leave it for a week or so and, and go home. So um, really good information here on what to do in lots of different situations. And again, I think that's one of the best kept secrets on the website. So definitely check out those checklists and procedures. Going back to the information menu, um, we have information on our sponsors. A lot of what you'll find here is for sponsors or people who are interested in becoming a sponsor. Um, 
to me, the easiest way to find our sponsors is geographically using the map where we started. But there is also a sponsor directory here. Um, and again, there's two versions, one for members that includes all of the offers from sponsors to our members, and one for non-sponsors that basically gives them uh, contact information. So if we look at the members list, this is a searchable directory. So for example, if I am searching for, if I know I met Captain Chris Caldwell at one of the events, but I can't think of the name of his business, I can put in Chris and search. And it will give me Captain Chris Yacht Services with their contact information. You can go to their website, send them an email, and the details tab is where any discounts um, from sponsors would be listed. You can also search, if I remove Chris from there, I can search for a specific category like marine stores, let's say. And all of our sponsors who wanted to be listed in that category will be shown. Admirals are, are our top level sponsors. Commander is just below them and Lieutenant is just below Commanders. So you can see all of the sponsors that provide that particular type of service that you're looking for. You can also select within a distance of a zip code. So if you know that um, you are sitting in a zip code specifically, you can search. And I have now filtered down on marine supply stores within 100 miles of my location and found one of our sponsors. So that's a, it's, this is very good to search um, for specific categories and to search by text. There's also the geographic search I showed you on the menu. And then the final one here, I don't need to click on for you to understand what it is, but useful links. This takes you to all different types of things from um, voting sites for different states that shows their rules to um, other clubs and associations, lots of detailed information about um, other sites that you can visit. So that's the information menu. The next one is the connect menu. And as I said, this is about all the different ways members can connect with other members to ask questions, gather information, find out more about the web. Um, the forum is, is probably another thing we get a lot of questions about. Once you join AGLCA, you will get a summary digest email of all of the posts that were made to the forum within the last 24 hours. A lot of people um, get those and read them and save them, but don't realize that they can actually go to the website and view that, and they can actually go to the website and search for older posts. And to do so, you just log in at the website and go to Connect and Forum, and you arrive at our main forum is just this one here at the top. The others are optional. These are special interest forums for families or solo loopers or people doing the Down East Loop this year. And then we have some specific to the Illinois Waterway. So all of those are opt-in if you choose to. Um, you can choose to opt into those. Um, everyone is automatically opted into the Great Loop Information Forum. You can choose to opt out by changing your preferences. And I will show you that later as well. Uh, but this is what it looks like instead of in that email format if you come to the website to read it it is in this format the newest post is at the top and you can see who posted it that's their name there and the most recent message is here um, you'll also notice all these new buttons that shows you what's new since the last time you logged on so you can see that on this account hasn't been logged in um, since the 26th, and those are the new posts. So the new button kind of alerts you to what you maybe haven't read yet. If you tap on the subject line, you get the list of posts. Um, you can, right now it's set up so that the most recent post is at the top. You can tap that to reverse that so that you're starting from the beginning of the thread. So a lot of people find that more helpful is to reverse that. Um, but if you've been reading from the beginning, you know, almost two weeks ago, um, and you want to just see the newest ones, you can sort it so that the newest one is first. Um, let's see, what else might you, there's also a threaded view, which shows you a little bit more um, who kind of responded to what, because it's not a linear each person responding, um, if that makes sense. So Tony responded, Hal responded to Tony, Chuck responded to Hal, Gene responded to Chuck, and Henry also responded to Chuck. So you can see it's kind of leather, layered there. And then Barry responded to Tony's first message. So a little confusing, but if you're, you know, if the conversation is not flowing for you, sometimes that um, threaded view can help. 
uh, but you can also switch back to flat view and that's where you see them all and you can sort them you know oldest to newest whatever you choose to do um, so that in a nutshell is what the forum looks like to reply you just obviously hit the reply button and it is as if you are typing an email you can choose to reply to them privately by email um, or you can reply to the forum which is the default and that's what would post and uh, everyone can see it then so um, one other thing to note in these optional forums and let me just back out to there of course there was a button I could have used to do that more simply but um, so for example let's say I am looping solo and I want to join this forum um, actually this is a bad example sorry this account has already joined that forum so I want to pick one that I have not joined in this account this is kind of my um, regular user account my admin account is the one I use mostly okay so I've wanted to look at storing my boat for the winter and I land here usually there is a button over here that says new topic and that's how you start a thread this is a question we get all the time. When someone wants, goes to one of these optional forums, since they're not automatically opted into it, they are able to read these posts, um, but the reply button is not there, and the new topic button, which should be right about here, is also not there. That's because they have not subscribed to this forum. And the easiest way to do that from here is to hit member preferences. Um, Let's see. I may have picked the wrong spot. Yeah, I did. There's actually a different spot we have to go to to subscribe to that. And I'm in my profile now, and that is where you subscribe. Um, forum memberships. You tap on that. You will see um, your automatically automatic forums automatically in Great Loop. You've got all of these optionals, and this account was already subscribed to those two. Um, but then you've got the others that avail are available. And by hitting the green button, that adds it to the ones you're subscribed to. And from there, I should be able to go back to that forum page. And now my new topic button is there, so I can start a new thread. And now if I were to open an existing thread, my reply button is there. So essentially you have to join that forum as a member to be able to do anything besides read the post. To actually participate, you do need to join the forum. Um, and again, I bring that up because that is a very frequent question. Uh, there is also, I'm going to go back to the main forum, um, or actually from this main page, there is a search. And you have um, lots of different ways to search. You can search within a single forum or all across all of the forums. You can search by the post person who posted it, um, the date range. So I can look for things in the past week where someone mentioned Down East, if they were interested in the Down East loop. And hopefully somebody mentioned that in the last week. That's a pretty popular topic right now. So yeah, um, there was a post actually that I made about the Down East Loop Full Day Seminar. So if you are looking for, um, let's say, somebody who mentioned Aquamaps, you know, perhaps you're considering Aquamaps and you want to see what people had to say about it, you can put the post date range out further. If you leave that blank, it searches the, the three or four years that are stored here. Of course, it takes a little bit longer to search when you are searching further back, um, but it will come up eventually. So while we're waiting that, for that to search, let's come back to the other browser window we have open here because we can continue on our little tour and come back. Um, so we're on the connect menu we were talking about forum harbor hosts are one of the biggest benefits to being a member um, and this is where you can read about becoming a harbor host you can search for them by name um, clicking here to search them geographically actually takes you to that map um, the, the harbor host um, guides that we've mentioned can be accessed from here and we are about to, on the next couple of days, to announce our Harbor Host of the Year finalists, and the past winners are all listed here. So the Harbor Host menu are all different details about the Harbor Host program, ways to get involved, ways to find a Harbor Host. 
And if you're not familiar with the Harbor Host program, there are about 400 around the loop. These are members who, uh, some are gold loopers who got a lot of help along the way and want to pay that forward to those coming behind them. Some are planners who are eager for the opportunity for loopers coming through to spend some time with them so they can pick their brain and, and gather more information. So typically Harbor Hosts, um, you don't even need to have done the loop or have a lot of information about the loop itself. It's all about offering assistance in your local area. Um, things like boaters coming through who maybe need a dentist or a dog groomer, um, if you can recommend those local services to them. Many harbor hosts go above and beyond. They will drive you for provisions. They will hold your mail for you until you arrive. Um, some will meet you at the marina and um, have dock tails with you. Uh, some invite you to their home. It's really up to each harbor host how much they can do. At a minimum, we just ask that you know they are responsive to phone calls and emails from members and try to answer their questions. But like I said, most of them go way above and beyond, and they are eager to hear from you. I think uh, not enough people really reach out to harbor hosts. They make the trip a lot more fun. So let's go back to our search. And of course, we got an error on the search. I think you get the idea of how it works, so I'm not going to go back and try and recreate that given the time frame we have. Um, still under ways to connect with other members, we have ambassadors. And you saw the forums specific to ambassadors. Right now we have two categories of ambassadors, um, family ambassadors and solo loop ambassadors. These ambassadors are really there to tell families, yes, you can do this, here's how we did it, or tell them it's doable and you know let the family gather all the information to make an educated choice. Same goes with solo loopers. You know, they're, um, some of their concerns and some of the things that they need to be aware of and be ready for differ slightly than people doing this as a couple. So these ambassadors are here to really kind of help those whose, whose circumstances are slightly different. We don't intend to have a Bayliner ambassadors page and a, um, a marine trawler or marine trader ambassadors page. It's not about you know people doing the loop on different types of boats or different time frames or different ways. It's about people whose needs are slightly different. So I hope that makes sense. Um, we do hope to eventually have ambassadors for reluctant partners, um, possibly for younger loopers and possibly for women loopers. So those are things that are kind of on our list, um, but we haven't implemented just yet. Once you select which category of these ambassadors fits you, you can visit their page. There'll be contact information for those that are serving as family ambassadors and instructions on subscribing to that forum that we have already visited. So that's what the ambassadors are about. Um, get involved. This just takes you to a page that's also accessible from your profile, um, but it tells you more about being a harbor host, joining our advocacy committee, um, joining our fundraising committee, or joining our speakers bureau. Um, the advocacy committee, you know, basically we try to work in areas where voters' um, rights are essentially being infringed upon. Most of the time that winds up being laws that are trying to limit or eliminate anchoring. Um, the fundraising committee, we really have not had to push that to be very active to this point. We've been able to raise the funds we need to support the advocacy um, through member donations without a big fundraising effort. And our speakers bureau, we get a lot of requests from local voting clubs, um, to have someone come speak about the Great Loop. We also tap this Speakers Bureau when we're having local events like our Looper Lifestyles that travel around the country. Um, so if you are somebody who likes public speaking and um, would like to share that information with others, that is where you can sign up for our Speakers Bureau. Uh, blogs and websites. Many of our members keep blogs or websites on their trip. Um, our website can host blogs, and we've got a link to that. It's not a very feature-rich option, um, but it is a blog, and it can, you can give a link directly to your blog um, to your family and friends, even if it's on the Great Loop site. So if you want a basic blog tool, that might be an option for you. We have a full list of member blogs hosted elsewhere, and there are hundreds of them, literally. So particularly as some of these people are not yet looping, and some of them have finished the loop many years ago, we realized as that list grew, it became less helpful. So we also have a feed of recent blog posts from members. Um, so this is continuously updated and you can work your way through all of the different posts. Um, and this is essentially just a more up-to-date look at people's blogs of what's happening out there on the Great Loop. 
Social and other media. Um, if you're on social media, this is a place to that kind of puts all of AGLCA's social media together in one place. Um, we've got our Facebook group. We've also got um, our Facebook page. Um, I think we took the link to Twitter off of there. But the in the media is also a great place to read about the Great Loop because as you can see, there has been a lot of media coverage of the Great Loop over the years. And this is, you know, everything from a local newspaper in Nebraska to um, the New York Times and USA Today and the Wall Street Journal. So lots of media coverage. Definitely suggest if you're interested in that sort of thing, spend some time on this page. They're sorted um, newest to oldest. So what you're seeing at the top is the most recent coverage of the Great Loop in the media. Um, Nebo Member Tracker. AGLCA has, does have an app. It sometimes is uh, makes the website a little bit easier to use on a mobile device. Um, so if you are struggling with the mobile version of the website, first of all, let us know so maybe we can help. But second of all, if you download the app, it may alleviate that problem. Um, but, and the app was originally primarily introduced because there was a way for members to locate each other. That locator was not as feature rich as we needed it to be. So we have opted to use um, an app called Nebo. Um, Nebo is really what AGLCA has adopted as our way for members to locate each other on the water. If you download the app and um, set up a Nebo account, make sure you use the same email address that is in your AGLCA profile, because that's how Nebo will know you're an AGLCA member. And then your boat marker, instead of being a plain white dot, will be the AGLCA logo. Um, so it's a really neat app. You can, even if you're not on the loop, you can download it and check out where loopers are. Um, and it gives you way to, ways to contact each other. Um, it's great if you're pulling into a marina and you see there's three other looper boats there. You can kind of see who's, who's already arrived. Um, members have used it to, to send information on the waterway. You know, they know there's three boats two miles behind them and they've used it to communicate that way occasionally as well. Um, so that is what Nebo is about. And there's lots more information available about that as well. And then of course, contact us as ways to reach um, the office staff, the home port crew at AGLCA's office. A lot of the member benefits were covered in what we've already discussed, um, but I'm just going to run through this list for the things we haven't. Um, the AGLCA Burgee, that is an indicator that you are a member of AGLCA. The white is for anyone who is a member. So if you are not yet looping, but you want to fly the Burgee, you are more than welcome to do so. Um, the gold, the middle one there, is for anyone who has completed the route, and the platinum is for anyone who has completed it multiple times. As I said, this is a members only item. So if you try to purchase it on the website and you're not logged in as a member, you won't even see the product. And we get that question a lot too, where members haven't logged in and they can't find where to purchase a Burgee. Um, I mentioned the, that each sponsor's profile has the discounts they offer in them. This is a kind of a all in one stop to see what discounts are available to members. So you just go to member benefits menu um, and click on discounts and you'll see the entire list. It's pretty lengthy. Um, membership really does kind of pay for itself. Um, discussion forum we've mentioned, we've mentioned Harbor hosts. I have not really showed you the searchable member roster and I must have skipped that on the menu because it is there. I'm gonna show you where that is because as I've said, most of your resources you can find from the menu. Um, so member roster, that's finding other members. So that's a connect item, ways to connect with other members. The member roster is searchable by a bunch of different fields, including boat name. So if you see a boat out there um, named Gypsy and you don't know who that is, you can look for Gypsy, search, and you'll find people who's got boat named Gypsy or the word Gypsy. Again, I'm not going to go into detail on that too much. Um, on the boat name because we may have some non-members on the call and I never re release member information without permission. Um, my sample boat in here is called Great Looper. So I'm gonna use that one, search. And it'll bring up the profile. So if you see that boat on the water and you're wondering, oh, I see the AGLCA Burgee, who is that? You can, I can see the boat name on their transom. You can put in the boat name. It'll bring up their profile. 
um, you can click on that for whatever other details that they have chosen to share. If you're a member and you don't want to be sharing this information, it can be suppressed through your profile. And I will show you that as well when we get over to the profile. Um, but you can also, uh, one of the best things I think about the searchable directory, um, you can search by combinations of the, these fields. So if you're considering a main ship for the Great Loop, and uh, main ships are popular for the Great Loop, so it's not hard to find somebody who looped on one. But So maybe it's a bad example, but if you're thinking about doing the loop on a bit of an unusual boat, or you want to talk to somebody who maybe had that kind of boat, you can put in the boat make. Um, you can change the loop progress. So if you want somebody who completed the loop in a main ship, you can hit completed and type in main ship here and hit search, and it'll show you all the members that did that. Um, so that's a great way to connect with other people in similar situations as you. If you are from Idaho and you're wondering if there are any other members in your area that you might be able to connect with, you can change the state to Idaho and search there. Um, so using, you can really use these search fields to your advantage. You can also find a harbor host this way. You know, if you are in Florida, which there are many, many harbor hosts. So, um, but you can pick a state or a city and harbor host and search, and you'll find anybody who matches those criteria. So it's a it's a powerful way to find members, even if you um, don't know them essentially. So the boat make, the boat name are great ways to to do that. All right, continuing on with our member benefits. Um, free webinars, obviously. Um, I will show you the classified ads uh, um, when we go to our shop menu because that's where they're located, but members can post classified ads free of charge. I will caution you that the ads are viewed by the public, and that's been a conscious decision. Most members seem to prefer it that way so that their ad gets the most possible views. Um, that, of course, like any place else on the internet, has on occasion led to scam offers being sent to the people who have something listed for sale in the classifieds. And we really dislike that. Sadly, unless we close that to the public and make only members able to see those classified ads, it's not something we can control. So just like to put that out there before anyone posts one. Um, we've covered the apps. Our rendezvous are members only events. Um, there's lots of details available right now about the upcoming spring rendezvous if you are curious. Our cost of looping calculator. This was designed with some inputs from some Go Loopers to help people estimate what it might cost them to do the Great Loop. So I'm going to run just a quick, um, this is actually the search feature. Um, what, what we've done is we've asked our gold loopers who kept track of how much they spent in different categories on the Great Loop to submit that data. And that data is now searchable by members. Um, so I am going to say, let's see, let's say I'm considering doing the loop in a 40 foot, somewhere between a 40 and a 42 foot boat. Um, and I wanna see uh, main ships. Hopefully we'll have one of these. Um, so I'm going to search for that. And if we have any looper boats that match that, that have put in their data, it'll pop up. I do want to caution you that, you know, this isn't, uh, the, if, if people put in kind of random data and save it to the database, you're going to pull up those results, which is kind of, um, you know, it's the old garbage in, garbage out factor. So you kind of have to look through. Um, but this was a 40 foot main ship. You can see the details about the boat, a 14-foot beam, a 19-foot air draft, et cetera. A lot of the costs are going to be based on your cruising preferences. So this particular boat um, was going to cruise, on average, seven knots. Um, on average, they traveled 41 miles a day. On average, they traveled four days a week and spent four nights at a marina and three at anchor each, each week. Um, they planned about a 6,000 mile trip, and this is actual data from a gold looper, so these are probably actual numbers. Um, took them 34 weeks, uh, 241 days to complete. They must have already had the boat or paid cash. They did not factor a boat payment into their costs, but they did factor their boat insurance in. Um, any equipment or gear they purchased, um, engine fuel, um, generator fuel, marina costs, all that is is here. And when you work your way through to the bottom, it gives you a cost for their loop. And some of the gold loopers put notes in there for you. Um, and that is the only, if there was a second entry, you'd have another um, 
a next page here. So you can poke around in there. Um, you can also run some calculations based on your own cruising preferences. So you might, and anything that's in blue here, you would need to fit in. So you you could fill in, um, and and what I'm doing right now is what I said sometimes results in kind of random answers. If you are just playing and trying to come up with some answers, please set this here to no. The question, are you entering actual data from your great loop to submit to our database? As long as you put no, it's not gonna store it and you won't have to worry about anything. Um, but as I said, the blue are factors that you fill in. Um, and when you reach the bottom, it'll total everything up for you. So uh, something for you to play with when time permits. And I'm just gonna back out to our benefits again. When you complete the loop, we will send you a lovely certificate commemorating that. Um, you've seen our newsletters and our Get Involved and our member blog feed. So that's the benefits, essentially. Um, a couple quick things to point out. This is our events menu. Any upcoming event is listed here. I mentioned the spring rendezvous registration is open. There's a whole page full of information about that. So if you're interested in that, please check it out. The shop menu is where you can purchase Burgies, gift certificates to give to someone else for membership, um, and where you'll find the classified ads. I'll just click on that briefly to show you. There are a few different categories. You can um, search on boats for sale by owner, um, boats for sale by sponsors, crew wanted. So if you're looping solo and want help in certain areas, you can post an ad for crew wanted. We have crew available. So if you want to do the loop, don't have a boat, or if you've got some experience that you want to offer to somebody, you can list, post yourself and add in crew available, and then some miscellaneous categories. Um, you can also place an ad, and again, that's free for members. So if you want to do that, you again go to classified ads and click here to post your ad. And it basically is a very simple form. It'll walk you through the process to add a classified ad. Uh, the final listing here, books and logo gear, those go to other vendors. So once you reach here, um, the Burgee is listed here again, um, but most of this, you are actually going to another website and purchasing this elsewhere, but we wanted to give you a one-stop shop to find some of these great resources, but that does occasionally create confusion. So just a heads up there. That is the benefits. I wanna take a quick look at your, the profile area um, because we're really uh, encouraging members to keep this up to date. First of all, we get asked a lot about a membership card. There is a button right here at the top to download a membership card. Um, so you can do that from a device and carry it with you or you can do it on a computer and print it. It also tells you when your membership expires, when you joined, et cetera. So we get a lot of questions about things right up here in this top area. Um, Personal info, contact info is pretty self-explanatory. I will point out um, there is a brand new button under other contacts for mobile number that agree you can opt in to receiving text messages. We're not using a whole lot of texting at this point, but we eventually will probably be doing more. So you may wanna opt into text messages. Um, additional member data. This is probably the most important part of your profile because this is all about you looping. Um, you can set your loop status to planning, in progress, completed, or completed more than once. You can tell us which years you plan to loop. Um, you can tell us if you are, um, if you're in progress, where did you start and how far have you come? Your boat name, your boat length and make. This is where all of that information in that member roster search comes from. So as far as looking for um, you know, a boat name, we looked for Great Looper. That was pulling that from this field. So if you want to be found, <laughs> definitely keep this up to date. Um, and when you finish the loop, the date gets filled in. We do this for you if you submit the form um, to us when you've completed the loop. So try to keep that additional member data current, particularly if you have address changes and things like that. Um, the standard member directory, is what your directory listing will look like. This is also where you can choose not to show anything. So if you don't wanna be in the directory, you can opt out of it right here. And the rest are you know, variations somewhere between showing all information and not being listed at all. And you can make your choice there. You can also um, add your social network um, links and your biography. And this is where your photo would be updated. So all of that is under the member directory um, in your profile. You can also change your privacy settings in terms of receiving emails from us or not. Um, you know, keep in mind that if you do not want to receive emails, some of our updates and things like that won't get to you. Um, 
the others, of course, if you choose to cancel, you may, and removing you completely from the database will erase every trace that you ever existed in our database. So your privacy settings are there. Additional members, this is also something a lot of people overlook. If you are part of a couple and one of you has joined, you both may share that membership. So just go to additional members in your account and hit the add button. And all you really need is their first name, last name, and email address, and it will send them their login credentials. They'll be able to log in independently of you at that point. Um, so definitely check that out. Um, financial history, this is all pretty self-explanatory. Anything you've purchased on our website, you can review the charges and the transactions there. Um, the forum, this is where we subscribed, the forum membership, that's where we subscribe to the optional one. And if you wanted to opt out of anything or change any of the settings, that's all under forum preferences. Um, and finally, under website, you can manage your classified ads from here. You can change your the things you are get, get involved in here. You can change your username and password. Um, and, and members can store a photo album on our website as well, and you would access that through here. I'm not using the mobile app very much right now, um, so you can pretty much ignore those. So with that um, kind of brief tour of this, um, that kind of wraps up what I wanted to show you. Um, I'm happy to take some questions through the chat feature. If anybody has some, you should be able to type that in there and I can read them and answer them for you. We'll just give it a minute or two in case anyone does have questions. And of course, if you um, have questions and prefer not to ask them now, I'm going to type my email address in here, which many of you probably have. But if you don't want to ask the question here now, you can email it to me at kruso at greatloop.org. So feel free to use that. And I do see that someone asked a question early on about getting the audio. Um, I'm guessing they've probably given up by now. <laughs> um, and I, I'll reach out to Claude directly. And uh, um, Cla Claude, if you did manage to get the audio and can hear me, great. I will reach out to you directly, though, with the recording information so that um, if you weren't able to get the audio working, you'll be able to hear it. Anyone have a question? And uh, Peter says, thanks for the tour. You are very welcome. It is my pleasure. Hopefully we'll see some of you, if, if we haven't met already, I hope to see some of you at events. Um, they really are great fun and they're a great way to uh, kind of dive in, so to speak, to the Great Loop. Our Looper lifestyle events are really uh, kind of an introduction. They're usually a day or a day and a half and we move those around the country. And uh, those do come with a, a membership or a membership extension. And then the spring rendezvous coming up, we do them spring and fall. And that is really, you know, a four day in depth, all in on the Great Loop. We have lots of planners that come to those as well as current loopers. So um, as I said, I'm always available for questions and we appreciate you joining us today. Hope everyone has a great weekend and happy looping. Thanks so much, everybody.